name is Becky Mugi and our devotion today comes from the book of Genesis chapter 38. Um, this is a chapter that happens in the middle of a well-known story of Jacob being sold into slavery in chapter 37. It digresses a bit in chapter 38 to talk about Joseph's older brother um, by the name of Judah and his daughter-in-law Tamar and then carries on again to talk about Joseph or to Joseph's story in um, Genesis chapter 39. So now this story that digresses from Joseph um, is about Judah, who is Joseph's older brother. Um, and it con and, and, and jo Judah now is in his mid-teens. Um, he has left home. Uh, he has found a Canaanite woman um, who is the daughter of a man named Shua. Um, and he begins to raise a family with her. He has three sons, Er, Onan, and Shela. Now, Er, Judah goes and finds a, a, a wife for Er to marry, and he, found, he finds a Canaanite woman by the name of Tamar. Now, Tamar and Er get married, but Er um, is, commits evil in the eyes of the Lord, and, and, and the Lord is displeased with him, and then he takes his life away and puts him to death. This leaves um, Tamar um, as a widow and without any offspring, without children. So as is customary law at the time, you know, at that time, it was known or is still known as the Levirate law. Judah's second son, Onan, is now meant to marry Tamar to provide her with an offspring who would be um, an heir to Ur, who is the firstborn son of Judah who died. Um, but it turns out in verse 9 that Onan was a, self, was, 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 self, was a selfish man and did not want to give an offspring for his brother. Um, so he, 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 he does ways in a very selfish manner um, that does not uh, fulfill his responsibilities. And so God is not pleased with him either and also takes his life away. Now, Judah is left with one son, Shelah. And Tema is now once again a widow. But this time, uh, we can see that in verse 11, um, Judah is suspicious. And he doesn't want Tema to, to his, his last born son, Shela, to marry Tema. And so he sends her, he sends Tema to her father's house and leaves her a widow. But promises that when um, Shela is older um, and is of age, he would marry Tema. After a long time, the daughter of Shua, who is Judah's wife, um, dies. And Tamar can now see that Judah has no intention of actually fulfilling his promise to her. He hear, or She hears about his trip to a, a town called Timna to go and shear his sheep. And so she decides to disguise herself as a prostitute upon hearing this. Um, and when Judah sees Tamar, he does not recognize her as the daughter-in-law. Um, he actually offers to sleep with her. Um, in exchange for a baby goat. Now, Tema requests for a pledge. It says, look, if you're going to, to give me a goat, until you, you deliver the goat to me, can I have something to hold on to? Can I have a pledge? And so Judah asks, what would you like? And Tema says, can I have, um, he requests, can I have the seal in his hand that he had? He says, can I have your seal, its cord, and um, the staff in your hand? And Judah is only too happy to give it to Tema. So now, a few months after a while, um, Tamar gets home and Judah sends his men to go and send the baby goat to Tamar, to the well, who he didn't know it was Tamar, to the prostitute that he had met, but um, they do not find her. And then months later or a while later, Tamar is home and is visibly pregnant. And the news gets to um, Judah that Tamar is pregnant. Now, this makes um, Judah very unhappy. He is furious that Tamar has become pregnant out of wedlock. And he now sentences her to death, calling to be burnt alive, calling her a harlot. In verse 25, we see, praise God, because as she has been brought out to be punished, to be burnt, she exclaims that she can actually identify the man whose um, child she bears. She goes on to produce Judah's seal, its cord, and the staff that was in his hand that he had given to the prostitute, um, that, she, that he had given to her when she had disguised herself as a prostitute. 
Judah 9 verse 26 realizes that he had wronged Tamar in not keeping his word to provide her with a husband. And he even goes on to exclaim that she is more righteous than him. And finally, because Tamar is not sentenced to the punishment of being burned, she goes on to give birth to twins who are Perez and Zerah. We later see that uh, Perez is the ancestor of King David and the royal house of Israel. And even more to that, Perez is the ancestor of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And this is, the, this, this, this is the last we hear of Tamar up until in Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. Um, she is mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Um, the Lord had determined a great future for the tribe of Judah, which was only going to come through God's sovereign gift of grace. It wasn't coming to um, pass through um, Judah's uh, planning. It was because of Judah's accidental fruitfulness in a prostitute's bed that the Lord Jesus Christ is known today as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. It was no accident to God that our fruitfulness, that, that, that this was going to come forth. And it shows, it goes to show that our fruitfulness can only begin with God alone himself. Oftentimes we may dismiss ourselves um, but here is Judah. He has raised two evil sons. He has abandoned a daughter-in-law. He has failed to fulfill a promise to provide her with a, um, a husband. He also now even goes to sleep with a prostitute and tries to kill Tamar for the very same thing he had done himself. Yet, later in the story, um, Judah receives a great blessing from God in Egypt. This passage for me highlights the grace of God who is merciful to Judah, even in his sinfulness, even in his brokenness. And it actually goes to show even to us a scripture that comes alive in this is in Jeremiah 17, 10. We, we, we read it the other day from a devotion, I think last week on, on Thursday or on Friday. Um, Jeremiah 17, um, verse 10, and I will read it. But I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine the secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. So many things we do, so many things we, we, we watch others do and we judge them with their actions. Yet the Lord himself is able to see why, that we, why, 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 people, are able, why people are doing the things that they do. He could tell why Tamar was, was going to put herself out there as a prostitute. She decided to take matters into her own hands because she wanted an heir. She wanted an offspring, somebody who would look after her in her old age. And this came to be, but it also came um, through ways that we would otherwise deem um, or see and judge from the outward way um, we see things rather than from the motives of the heart. Um, we thank God because he's a God of grace and a God of mercy and a God of faithfulness that his ways are so different from our ways. He's thought so far from our thoughts. He's still sovereign and his word, whatever he says will be, he promises it never returns to him vain. He had promised that there would be lots of ancestors for the house of Jacob. And through Judah, he was able to actually fulfill that, that there, there were ancestors um, that came about and, and, and through, through Judah came um, the house of David, came um, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. This is God's grace displayed, even in a very difficult scripture. We thank God for this.